Introduction to Nursing Concepts, Medical Terminology for the Fluid, Electrolytes, Hydration, IV Unit. This is Martha Olson from Iowa Lakes Community College. Peripheral means uh, an extremity. Usually we start a peripheral IV to the arms or hand. Uh, peripheral actually means near the surface. For uh, other words, it can be like periphery or at the edge, or it can mean non-significant, something of uh, unimportance. Infiltration is different than infection. Infiltration is where that fluid has leaked out of the vascular space and it is now into the interstitial space. It's um, puffy and cool because the IV fluid is cool in that area. An infection is warm to touch. The other name is phlebitis and an infection then is um, a serious matter. The treatment for both is to take the IV out. Thrombosis is a Greek word meaning clot. We think of a deep vein thrombosis. Hypo is below. We have uh, such things as hypokalemia, an electrolyte that's low. Hyponatremia, which is low sodium. Hypocalcemia. Hypovolemia means the volume is low. Maybe I'm dehydrated and I don't have very much volume in my vessels floating around and I am hypovolemic. Hyper is just the opposite. All those words can now be used to mean above levels. Hypervolemia, fluid volume excess would be another term we might see used with that. When your potassium and your calcium and albumin levels are high, that's um, hyper is the prefix used on those. Viscous means sticky or thick and with a medication like lidocaine that's viscous, usually we need a larger needle to be able to administer that thick medication. I think of it kind of like pancake syrup, trying to get it out of the bottle onto your pancakes in the morning. IV solutions are of one of three types. Isotonic is the same as what's in the body, and we think of normal saline. 0.9% no, uh, sodium chloride is an isotonic, as is lactated ringers. Hypertonic uh, is above, and hypotonic is below. Your hypertonic solutions are typically dextrose, with the exception of D5W, which is isotonic. When we look at an infiltration that kind of goes really bad, it's um, a condition where it burns the tissues to the point of severe tissue injury, and that is called extravasation. Um, it's accidental administration of IV medications, potassium, uh, your chemotherapy medications are very high risk for causing tissue damage. I've seen people where they wind up with an amputation to an extremity because of the administration of an IV medication that's not in a vein, it's in the interstitial space and it causes a lot of burning to that tissue. Autologous blood is when a person, usually before they go into an elective surgery, donates their own blood, then after the surgery when their hemoglobin is low, they get their own blood back. The other way we see that is uh, with the hemovac that comes with the person out of surgery, up to six hours afterwards, we retransfuse what's come out of the wound and give it back to the person. And uh, that's very typical with your orthopedic, your total hip, total knee patients. Thrombocytopenia is another thrombo is clot, uh, cyto is cell, so it's again looking at a blood clot. Intra is within. Uh, the picture here is intraarticular. They're putting medication into that articular space. Uh, a lot of those are intra as a prefix is used with things like intradermal, intramuscular, those are injections we do with needles, intraocular is into the eye, intravenous is into the vein, and that's starting your IV and giving fluid. When we look at medications, we think of peak and trough. Remember, peak is the top part where that medication is at its full effect and, and working, and trough is where the level uh, concentration in the blood drops to um, its lowest. Trough is, is the lowest, and so we want to keep that peak and trough within therapeutic range. Uh, some of them, the uh, medications that we use peak and trough for is antibiotics to make sure that that level isn't falling down below where the microorganisms can grow again and your anti-seizure medications so that they don't have a seizure from the medication not being in a strong enough concentration. Acidosis and alkalosis are two things you've had in chemistry. Acidosis is the acidity in the blood. 
it's increased hydrogen ion concentration and your alkalosis then is uh, excess base or more alkali. It happens when there's an increase in ser uh, serum bicarbonate, HCO3 concentration. It's usually a loss of hydrogen from the body. We also define them as metabolic or respiratory. So you can have metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, and the same with respiratory. Active transport is getting molecules across the membrane in a direction against their uh, concentration gradient. So they're able to pass from one region to another where they're needed. ABGs, arterial blood gases, we draw them out of an artery. And the main purpose of drawing an ABG is to see how well the blood is carrying oxygen to the tissue. So it's not the return trip in the venous system. Arterial is looking at what's the O2 concentration, the CO2, the bicarb or HCO3, and the acid base in the blood that's going to the tissues. How well are the lungs working to oxygenate the tissues in the hemoglobin? With a buffer, we know that a buffer is used uh, with pairs of chemicals that work together to maintain that pH. An anion and cation. Anion is a Greek word for up. It's got a negative charge and it's negatively charged so it has uh, more electrons and protons. And a cation actually means to tear down or break down. I think of like a construction worker with a caterpillar. When the caterpillar goes and smashes into a house, he breaks it down. A cation is a positive charge and with that it has a more number of protons than electrons. And again, that's in that electrolyte part of chemistry of what we're talking about. Crystalloids and colloids are two different uh, products. We want to look at how they're um, the same and how they're different. Crystalloids can be crystallized. It's things like minerals and salts that can be in um, the solution and saline probably is our most common type that we see. They're very small molecules. They pass easily. They're nice because they're more inexpensive. They can be stored at room temp for longer periods of time. When we think of excessive use of them, however, we think of pulmonary edema. The opposite of that is more of a blood product called a colloid. And those are larger par particles. We also use them when a person is hypovolemic to replace the fluid that they have to get that vascular system um, full of what it needs. Some of the colloids that we see used are head of starch, dextran, plasma protein solutions. They don't have as long of shelf life and excessive use can also cause pulmonary edema. So uh, colloids are also used to support the vascular system and as we look at how they're different, we know colloids are larger particles than the crystalloids. Your crystalloids are stored at room temp Colloids have to be kept in the refrigerator, more of a blood product. Your crystalloids can escape the vascular system and leak out and cause kind of that edema throughout the body. The colloids tend to stay in the vascular space better, and the crystalloids are uh, a more cheap type of solution if uh, that's one of your considerations. The crystalloids are also more easily available for administration. Extracellular uh, volume deficit and excess, two opposites. We look where that fluid is going. Extracellular volume deficit is the person doesn't have enough. Usually the blood pressure is low, they're dizzy when they stand. Excess, too much. The, the, the uh, highway is very full of uh, traffic and things are moving along and congested. When we think about the different spaces where fluid goes, we know intracellular is inside the cell. The majority of your body fluid is intracellular. Interstitial is that space in between the cell and the vessel. That's where edema takes place. If you eat a whole package of chips and you have a lot of sodium on board, the water and the sodium are gonna cause you to be edematous in that interstitial space. We also know that when you have an IV uh, that goes bad and you get the infiltration, it's in that interstitial or middle of the road space. Intervascular is where your blood pressure comes. So if you have fluid volume deficit, your blood pressure is gonna be low because there's not a lot of volume in there pushing things around. 
When we look at our last slide, it's osmosis, and we think of water. Water and osmosis go together, and it goes in, through that semi-permeable membrane where the concentration is higher to equalize, to kind of get a, you know, it's like having 20 students in one room and 10 in another. Well, I'm going to send five over and make 15 in each room. It just kind of gets everything so that uh, your areas are more equally distributed with your molecules. This ends our unit on medical terminology for uh, the unit, and hopefully it's been helpful to um, your understanding of this content. Have a great day.